Good afternoon. I'm Laura Rainwater. I'm one of the pastors at Parker United Methodist Church. And it's good to be with you today as we begin looking at probably one of the more famous disciples that followed Jesus, Peter. Now, it's very interesting that Peter is kind of the second name. It's kind of the nickname that Jesus gives Simon. Um, so we're going to call him Simon today, and probably in a few weeks, we, or maybe even next week, um, we will have a chance to explain why Simon's name does change to Peter. But in our passage that we looked at this past Sunday, it was in Luke chapter 5. It's the story of Simon and his brother Andrew and their friends James and John, James and John, who were fishermen who had wrapped up their fishing overnight and that morning they were they were at the lakeside, they were at the shore of the lake and they were cleaning their nets. Kind of the last thing that you would do if you're a fisherman is to clean your nets. But something changes. You see, they um, were cleaning their nets after a very poor showing of fishing. Can you imagine if this is your livelihood and you spend all night casting your nets to catch fish and you don't catch anything? Or you catch so little that it, it doesn't even matter? We can only imagine how discouraged they might be. We could only imagine as they're cleaning their nets, getting ready to go home, they just wanted to go home. They just wanted to put the night behind them. But that's not what happened. Instead, Jesus is there. He is on the shore that morning. Um, crowds are beginning to follow him and he has nowhere to go. And so he asked Simon if Simon would let Jesus get into his boat and then Simon would row out a little ways so that he could begin teaching and preaching to the crowds that were following him. Now, I could imagine that Simon was not exactly excited about this. After all, he'd had a long night work and it was not a successful night. He was just finishing up cleaning his nets and here is this guy that he's heard about. We know from the previous chapter that um, that Jesus had healed Simon's mother-in-law, so it wasn't like this was a complete stranger. But we can only imagine that Simon wasn't exactly excited for this moment, excited that he wasn't gonna be able to go home. But yet, he, he says okay, and he gets Jesus in the boat, and they, they, row off, they row off shore just a bit, just enough so that Jesus can do his preaching gig to the crowds that were following him. And maybe you know from being, whether it's at the shores of a lake or shores of the ocean, is that sometimes you can hear um, quite a far away with the water, the way that the, the acoustics work there. And so Simon does that. But do you wonder if he wondered, why am I doing this? Do I really have to do this? What's the point? I'm just, I just want to go home. I just want to go home, but yet he is obedient. At least he's obedient at this point. But then after Jesus preaches, he invites Simon to row even further out. He says, go into the deep waters, essentially where the fish would be, and cast out your nets. Now, this is when I'm sure Simon wondered what on earth is happening. Why would I do something crazy like that? Why would Jesus, this guy that I know a little bit about, he's asking me to do something crazy, but doesn't he know that I've been out here all night? Doesn't he know that we were failures at our job over the last 12 to 24 hours? Has there ever been a time that you felt Jesus was asking you to do something? Okay, maybe Jesus asking you to do something may not be exactly what would come to mind, but has there been a time when you just knew you needed to do something? You felt it was that higher power, whether it was God, whether it was your conscience or something, but the initial reaction was to argue. No, that's not right. I have other things I need to do. Why get distracted? Why, why spend my time doing something that I know is not going to work? How many times have we said that? We've tried it. It didn't work. Why would we try it again? Perhaps that's what Simon was thinking. But yet, because of his experience of Jesus healing his mother-in-law, he said, okay, because you have asked it, I will do it. So he goes out into the deeper waters 
He casts out those nets and a miracle happens. There are so many fish in the nets that he has to call his brother. He has to call his friends to come and help bring the other boat because there are so many fish in this net that I just know that it's going to capsize us. He was surprised. He was surprised at this miracle. Perhaps he was surprised that something that he thought would not happen indeed did happen. I bet you there are times in our lives that it's easier not to believe than to believe. There are times in our lives when we look back and go, eh, it didn't work out that time. Why would it work out this time? Because it's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to be frustrated. It's easy to argue with whatever that inner voice is that's calling us to do something, to do something unexpected or to do something that we just don't think would possibly succeed. As I was thinking about this, uh, I, I can't think of any particular big event that um, I could say God called me to do and to my surprise at work, except for the call to ministry. But I don't want any of you to feel like that this is a this is a passage or this is a story of Jesus calling people into ordained ministry. Um, there are way more of you than there are of me. Um, and I believe that God speaks to all of us just in different ways. So the, the one I thought about is sometimes I have a plan in my head and I just, I'm just ready to get home. I've been working all day, whether it's ministry or whether it was, I was when I worked at the university years ago or worked for local government, you know, I just, I had a plan. After I was done with my hours, I was going to go home, kick my feet up, relax. Um, but yet sometimes that phone call comes and things change. Um, as a pastor, several times I would have that plan and I would be working and getting things together for Sunday or, or going to meetings or whatever it might be. But then I would get that phone call that would say, uh, can you go see my family member that's in the hospital? Or a church member says, hey, things are going, um, they're going, they're very difficult right now. I just need somebody to talk to. Or I get, get a call from the local hospice chaplain that would say, hey, we've got somebody here who is from a United Methodist background, but they're not in their hometown. Can you come and pray with them? I know it's the right thing to do. Um, so I would get in my car and I would head to the local um, hospice chapel, or I would go to the hospital, or I would make that phone call and I would call somebody that really needed somebody to listen to. Even though it's keeping me from doing what I originally wanted to do. But you know, by the end, I knew I was exactly where I needed to be. By the end, I recognized, or by the end of that conversation or that visit, I, I knew that God was with me when my plans changed. God was with me when I didn't do what I thought and instead did what I was called to do. Now, maybe you don't, don't have the responsibility of pastoral care. Or you don't have the responsibility of responding to somebody when they call at the last second and say, can you please talk to me? It, actually, that last one might be what some of you have experienced. When you've got a, a, an agenda to go on and then somebody calls and says, I need you to drop everything and I need somebody to listen to me or I need to share what's going on. Or we have plans in our workplace, but then something happens in the, the experiences of our life, the regular everyday life uh, just interrupts. And we just know that that was the right thing to do. Sometimes I think we hear these stories of Jesus calling the disciples and we think, yeah, that's not me. I'm not a fisherman. I don't, I'm not one of those people that Jesus is going to call and I'm going to all of a sudden become a big old disciple. Um, but what I want us to consider is that uh, I bet you Simon didn't think he was going to be called to do anything extravagant. In fact, in this interaction, all Jesus asked him to do was row out into the waters and then row a little further and drop out his nets, even though all Simon could think of is why could this possibly be something that's helpful? 
How is God speaking to you? When are those moments in your life that you know that it was God that interrupted your plans, interrupted what you thought was going to happen? Maybe it was something big like changing a job or starting a new relationship or uh, moving across country. Or maybe it's something little like Setting aside the quiet five moments that you wanted when you got home and instead you called that family member that was across town or across the country or across the world just to check on them. And then they said something like, I'm so glad you called. I really needed somebody to reach out to me today. Or you wrote a letter. Does anybody remember writing letters and putting stamps on them and putting them out in the post office box or the mailbox or whatever it is? Or do you remember getting something like that and realizing that was just the bit of encouragement I needed in that moment? Because God works in mysterious ways. Being a disciple and following Jesus doesn't mean that we're going to be called necessarily to something big and grandiose, except maybe that little something is big to somebody else. So during Lent, as we walk and we follow Peter as he journeys, as he journeys from Simon, a common name at that time, and became Peter, which in um, Greek means the rock. As we're following his story, let us consider our own stories, the ways that we have encountered the holy, the ways that we have been challenged to do something a little bit different and we found that it was the right decision. Even if our initial reaction would be, I'm not really sure about that. You see, I think during Lent, as we prepare for Holy Week, we prepare for the resurrection, it reminds us that God is still seeking us. God is looking out for us. God is longing for us to be in relationship. We just have to, sometimes we have to stand still enough to let God find us so that we can be found. So I look forward to seeing you um, this coming Sunday, whether online or in person. But I wanted to close our time now with a poem. Um, it's by the Reverend Sarah Speed. And may it remind you that God is indeed seeking you. I put my headphones in. I walk quickly. I look toward the ground. I create one million barriers of independence, but still God seeks after me. God leans a rainbow over the sky. God sends sun after the rain. God blankets the earth with wildflowers. God allows music to carry and laughter to rise, all so that I might notice. And when I do notice, the unfurling that begins in my should is slow and holy and burning. I am not alone. God has been chasing after me all this time. Go in peace, dear friends. Amen.